Islam as a way of life. And then after 10 years, uh, we have 16 years of experiencing, working in the government, trying to make Islam as an institution. How, how an institutional approach towards uh, realizing the ideal of Islam that was been for, for the past 16 years. And then what happened in 1998, we struggled for 20 years. For 20 years, uh, <clears throat> we start the reform movement. We call it reformacy, where Anwar was uh, put in jail together with most of our top leadership in Abim. And I was honored to be in prison immediately after him. <laughs> but only for 10 days, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so that 20 years, uh, what we call, uh, has been an enriching experience for us. It was a very enriching and soul searching for us on, on, on how to bring forward Islam for the past 20 years. And Alhamdulillah, uh, May 9, 2018, the seed of reformation that we planted uh, for the past 20 years bears some fruit. And Alhamdulillah, now almost for one year, we have a new government. We made to unseat the Amno led government, and now we have uh, a new government uh, through democratic way. Alhamdulillah, there was no bloodshed. It was considered to be a very mature democratic transition of changing government without having uh, any bloodshed or fighting uh, among races and whatnot. And now for the past one year, what we call, we are facing a new challenge because uh, we have four diverse ideological parties forming the government. We have the former AMNO uh, members led by Dr. Mahathir in Bersatu. Uh, still nationalist uh, movement, remnant of AMNO, uh, what we call the ideology, is the continuing to fight the Malay nationalism. And then we have the Democratic Action Party, uh, the so-called Chinese party, fighting for the right of the Chinese, uh, mostly a socialist background, uh, trying to have a Malaysian, Malaysia concept that we are equal, we have to share the country as equal not as a second-class citizen. And then we have the Amanah Party, the, uh, what we call the splinter of past, uh, trying to revive uh, Islam within the material uh, society, we call it Amanah. Uh, and uh, we have the uh, People's Party, the PKR Party, People's Justice Party, led by Anwar, the material party, that uh, a strong presence of Islam uh, and, and, and the Malay uh, interests and, and these this four, what we call, parties trying to work together. In one year, uh, with the pressure coming from the AMNO, who, who had been in power for the past 61 years, and naturally, what we call, uh, we are facing the onslaught of attack to make sure that this a uh, new government uh, will become a failure and they are talking about the Egyptian experience what we call the deep government uh, what we call the still playing their role uh, unseen, we don't know who they are but they are moving towards trying to undermine the present party the, the present government so uh, the challenge is great, it's big and uh, we are grouping with ideas uh, and and, and trying to find ways and means. And at the same time, uh, the brothers from all over the world is putting a very high hope and expectation on us. <coughs> well, Alhamdulillah, now we have, we have Turkey, but Turkey is overloaded with a lot of burden and responsibilities. Now, at least Malaysia can share some of those uh, uh, burden and responsibilities. So while we are trying grouping, trying to work, uh, work uh, trying to make the government successful, at the same time the expectation is, is, is very high on us, and we are not really in control with, with the government. Uh, so these are the things that uh, we, call, we hope the discussion tonight, based on your experiences, 
we have seen the, what's happening uh, uh, in, in major part of the world. We have seen the, what's happening in Sudan. Uh, we hope Sudan will become another country that can, can come together with us. But now what's happening in Sudan uh, is still unsure. Uh, what's, what's really going to happen over there? But somehow what we call uh, it is still uh, we hope uh, something good will happen over there. So and in Indonesia we have what we call uh, the result is still uncertain. Uh, there are some uh, what we call uh, the, the two presidential candidate uh, claim to be the other winner, and, and nobody wanted to relent and, and, and respect what we call uh, the decision of the of the voters because uh, there are a lot of claim that uh, the, the, the process, the election process is a lot of discrepancies, uh, a lot of manipulation by the uh, ruling party. <coughs> so from that context, what we call, uh, I am so uh, what we call intrigued by looking at the, uh, the, the topic dawah to the elite of the society. I think this is uh, something that we should focus on. Uh, because uh, we have done with the masses, basically we know, we started with the masses on, on doing dawah, but I think we have to consider trying to fine-tune our dawah to the elite, because they are, in a way, the deep government as well. They can say they, they, are, they, are, they are good, what we call their concern, can, can, can change uh, policies. So I think it is good uh, to listen to Dr. Ahmad, because he survived. Whatever come, you know, what, whether the situation is good or bad, his optimism, we have to emulate. Whatever the situation comes, we can still remember after, after the 9-11 the uh, event, Triple IT and Star Foundation was, 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 was charged, was, was under the scrutiny of the CIA, what we call it. Uh, but uh, when we met Dr. Ahmad, he still a lot of enthusiasm, positive, and I think that, that, that makes him look young. <laughs> I've seen him for the past 20 years, he still looks the same. Looks like. Looks like. Yeah, I'm growing older. I've got a white hat. <laughs> but is that enthusiasm? We yeah, want to know whether you are 30 plus <laughs> young or you are elderly. <laughs> that is Dr. Ahmad Always positive, whatever. Even there is one chance, one whole one percent, that one percent is very important for the future of Islam. I think with that note, Alhamdulillah, we would like to listen to you. Congratulations. بسم الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. في تسجيل محمد. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. My dear brothers and sisters. I had a good opportunity before this meeting to sit with our sisters. And Alhamdulillah, in my estimation, was a great meeting. And inshallah, we will all learn from these trials and tribulations. Dawah to 
elite of society. Each subject by itself is enough for a talk for after nine o'clock. <laughs> but I try to give some reflections on the aspects rather than giving it the full thing because Alhamdulillah all of you are experienced and you are in da'wah like any one of us among ourselves but maybe someone had more exposure to some of these things than the other. Let me say one very important statement. This religion is not of Ahmad Tutunji or Muslims or it is Allah Ta'ala has guaranteed. اليوم أكملت لكم دينا وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. He has perfected this religion. He has given it to us. And I have accepted you are following this religion. And if Allah Ta'ala wants something to happen, no force can change it. And in another verse he says, Inna nahnu nazzalna al-zikra wa inna lahu lahafidun We have given this message and we guarantee it's Staying pure, clean, no transparent from it, uh, involvement from the human beings to change it. And you will be happy to know if about a month ago I received uh, a translation of the Quran, which one, uh, one of our brothers originally from Bangladesh, and he lives most of the time in. Uh, Australia, Brother Rashid Rashid, very nice brother, very good brother, and I was involved with him from the beginning when he started on the translation. He has fallen in love with the first uh, section of the Surat al-Baqarah, a few lines. Alif Lam Mim Dalik al-Kitabu, La Rayba Fihi, he reads it. لا ريب في هدى للمتقين. and many of us sometimes still I do both. but ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. and he emphasizes that this book is the only book in the universe which there is no playing around with it. and Confirmation of the ayah. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. He's a good scholar, very nice scholar. I brought a copy of it with me, but I gave it to some brother. But uh, perhaps I should send you a copy for your groups. Sometimes, you know, in your Quran studies, have a look at it. There are, in the maybe last 10 years, at least 30 new translations of Quran has come out in English. And it would be good to look at it, or at least some people become expert on it. And you may be able to take out a lot of good things because these people make this Quran, some of them 20 years, 25 years they have worked on it to translate. So don't just reject something because you are used to only one kind of uh, interpretation. So this book is good to see it. And this uh, verse which he has taken it and has made it in the title of the translation of his Quran gives us much more confidence also. That many people did not look at the ayah to read it this way. The other one is no less than this. 
but it is giving a dimension which many people have been trying from the special West to put doubts on the Muslims. So this will say the beginning of it is that Allah Ta'ala is the protector of this religion. He doesn't need us for it. But He guides us so that we'll get more reward to do whatever we can. It is His way to put us on the Salat al Mustaqim, which we are every day asking about it so many times every day. I heard my brother putting the emphasis on what I usually say, especially in this exclusive meetings of the brothers of the Dawa. Those people were proven that Alhamdulillah they have done great work that Malaysian Muslim society is what is in it. I always used to say and I repeat this here also that I remember coming to Malaysia in 1970 first time and Brother Anwar came on a scooter and uh, <laughs> met me and with my bag and myself wore that scooter and went we did not have means to share the love we are now having. I don't go to the more details about it, but we'll come to the to the part of it is this. He arranged for me a lecture at the University of Malaya. You know that big old long one. It takes about two thousand people. At least I was told that way. If it is 50 less, 50 more, I don't mind. I forgive them. <laughs> but I looked at the meeting. I had come from America. And I was, I was having an uh, around-the-world trip to go to as many countries as possible. And uh, for Muslim student associations on a country level. 1970, because I was the Secretary General of IFSO, International Islamic Federation of Student Organizations, and we said we cannot accept just having 10, 15 national organizations. Alhamdulillah, in that trip, about 17 new national we had. India, we made one same year after I left them one year. Abim, 1971, one year after this trip. Mauritius, someone was telling me that they were in Mauritius, the Muslim student, uh, Muslim uh, student organization, yes, M MSA, uh, was also, Allah, their organization was called differently. SIM, Student Islamic Movement. Student Islamic Movement. This gave hope to the Muslim youth. And things were not easy that time also for the Muslims. But Alhamdulillah, we were making progress with our young people, whether students and youth. And we were winning them over. To the extent which it reached to an apex and before five, six years, seven, six, seven years ago, Rabi al Arabi and so on. The enemies came and tried to destroy it and succeeded partially. Let me assure you that if we put trust in Allah, And we make dua to him because he says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Wa idha sa'adak ibadi anni fakul inni qareeb. Ujibu ta'wata da'i da'a. And 
and inviting us to make more of This is the time in this country that we have to use the greatest arm which we have, which Allah Ta'ala has given us, is dua. We use this also because we are in emergency. We are in a transition period. And we will not leave all the other efforts which we can make. But our problem is that we need help from the higher authorities as well. And he has promised us, you do your job, your job. I do mine. A steady level. So please have the full confidence that we will overcome this problem. But it needs work from us. And I can see it with my eyes and I know like I know my name is Ahmed that this century, inshallah, is the century of Islam. And I have said it before you maybe several times before. And every day I am more convinced than the day after before. And I can see all the things which are leading to that. So, future discourse is bright, is very bright. Be confident. In 1967, in my lifetime, I think that was the worst time ever I had felt. But Alhamdulillah, even then, we were not shaken up. When all the armies of the Arab countries and so on, they were destroyed and uh, finished. Anything we were hearing in TV, newspaper, in the street, people, I was in America at that time. As though every word is like a bullet or a knife entering into our body. Allah, I still remember it and so on. Despite I had something which I made me more stronger than the others. We'll talk about it some other time then. I was reading in Fajr, I was then uh, in charge of the newsletter of MSA of US and Canada, and I used to put it together, and my advisor in petroleum engineering used to help me. I read this guy in Fajr. لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will be tested. لتبلغون في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعون. First time I understood this word, which I have read it maybe hundreds of times. ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذن كثيرة. That you hear a word and you feel hurt. Really hurt, like a physical hurt. Look at the end of the ayah. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Resort us and in several places. But this one was related to the personal experience of getting Allah from the words which we are hearing or so on. The resort to Tasbiru, Taqwa, and so on. And we did. One of our brothers had sent me a letter. Maybe some of you even know him. Uh, an Egyptian brother who was a lawyer and Saudi Arabia at that time, uh, Swedish, uh, 
the fifth shell. A man with a vision. He wrote me a letter 10 days before this tragedy happened in uh, Middle East. He said, Ahmed, in his letter, I know you are in charge, you are leading the Islamic work and so on and so forth. I went and saw in the Middle East and there would be a war between Israel and the Arab countries. <coughs> Arab countries are not prepared at all and they would have great tragedy. I want you not to be strict.
والله يا الهي ان اي ونت ات فروم الله وهو قادر هي كان دو ات بس ات نيدز ورك فور اس وي هاف تو دو ا لوت اوف ورك ناو بوتينغ ذس اون اور سيتويشن ان ماليزيا The person who tried to destroy Anwar, Alhamdulillah, he himself stood in the public and said it very clearly, I was wrong. And I admit it, so to say. Maybe Allah Ta'ala Qadir and no changes are. And he has promised Brother Anwar that he will, after two years, give the leadership to him. We have to assume 100% that, inshallah, this is going to happen. And we have to work very hard that we make it happen. And it can be done. And we need every stratum of the Muslims, from the youngest to the oldest. We should use the khutbah, Jum'ah, to make the people aware of this. That Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala gave this country this kind of people who, despite all what happened, they were able to forgive each other and come together to help the country and liberate the people of Malaysia from few people who are taking all their resources for their own personal play. And we admire our Prime Minister in giving this commitment to Brother Anwar Ibrahim that you come and take over from me in a short period of time. Be positive. Let him hear it. And let him believe it also. The alternative is what? We become miserable. Oh, we, would he do it? Would he not do it? <laughs> what do we benefit from? Now, when we say this, we make a commitment. We make a commitment that we will treat the people everywhere in this special, special period before Brother Anwar taking. We treat the people in a nice way. We open ourselves to all the society in Malaysia. Make them proud that our country was able to overcome this problem and the greatness of Brother Anwar Ibrahim immediately to say, I am willing to forgive you for everything which you did. On one condition, that we have to eradicate corruption among our people. Let them benefit from their resources rather than few, 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 few people exploiting it. It's not difficult for us to do it. It is not difficult for us to bring it to people. We have very good writers, we have great orators. Everyone in the school should be positive like this. Everyone in the university has to do this. Everyone in all their relationship in the market, in every place, saying that you see how Malaysia has succeeded and became different than other countries, that they are fulfilling their promises. If it doesn't happen, which I don't want even to discuss it, but for a very brief, we are all ready to, in the next elections, do it ourselves. 
and I am really like I know my name is Ahmed that my father knew very well without Anwar he would not be able to come to power and that's why he left his level of so to go and say I am sorry we give the benefit of the doubt and that is why we praise and we say, may Allah bless him to be able to fulfill what he has given to the Ummah here. Please think about it carefully. It needs every one of us to work. It needs from us to talk to Brother Anwar and tell him, Brother Anwar, we are here. You don't have to do all the work yourself. We are willing you assign us anything for us to do, and you know what we can do. You have worked with each other 40 years and maybe more. Let us carry some of the burden from him. When I saw him yesterday in his house, he spoke, Wallahi, it was the end one 40 years ago. If anybody has recorded you, go and listen to it. My heart was like a big football. <laughs> really. I spoke before him. They had a karate scene and so on. Every Thursday they had this in the, in the house. And he told me after the Isha, you have to speak. I am an obedient follower. <laughs> My boss at home is Maysoon al And I listen. <laughs> and here today, my boss is Brother Anwar. Whatever he says, he says, Saman wa ta'a. I mean it. Please, let us not go to the negatives. None of us can claim that we don't have mistakes. No one can claim that we know everything. Yeah. Let us collectively work together, each one just cover whatever there is weak place, we go and cooperate in covering it. If we remain solid like this until the time comes, which is promised, and that's not too long, we will be strong. Whether it happens or not, that is the best for us. I'll stop here. All of you are very intelligent and you can discuss this matter much better than me because you know also the local conditions better. But there is one advice to do this very effective is each group who know each other very well. They can work together very well. Choose an area in which you can help Brother Anwar to be able in this transition period to become presenting to people our alternative. Work collectively. Don't say they must do this, they must do that, the United Nations must do like this, the, the Arab Union should do this, the African Union, let them do whatever they want. We don't want to interfere with them. What we want is what we, every one of us, can do in this issue. In a positive manner, please do not spend one minute of your time on the negative. We will do it. And we have to do it. We have to indoctrinate our children to make dua for Brother Anwar and his uh, team. It can be that Mumma Dalik ala Allah and the Aziz. As I said, I only have three and a half hours left. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it is uh, better to reduce it. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Now let me give a bit more time on the second part.
da'wah to elite of the society. This is a very special topic. Alhamdulillah, I have done a lot of work on this in America, and we wrote full proposals on it. When I noticed that most of the people who were becoming Muslims in America, they were from Afro-Americans. And most of them, like in the time of the Prophet وسلم, they were the not so important in American society. Just like in, with the Arabs, uh, they were the poor, the weak people, and so on and so forth. But these are the people who change the world. We said, uh, and let me give you just this, I have maybe said it to most of you have heard from me. Between 1963, when we formed the MSA, and I came from England to America, and 71, when I started to live outside, and I went to Libya, survived one and a half years there. Survived. Yeah. And we did a lot of good work. Some other time we'll give you some stories to make you happy. They are positive things. Okay. We sometimes try also things to happen too fast for us. We made a project and we said, okay, about <coughs> maximum 20% of the American society are somehow involved in decision making. They are in the upper class. And usually most of them are black. The middle class is a very big one, about maybe 70%. And the lowest class is about 30%. We have succeeded in that 70% very, very much in the Dawa. One and a half million people became Muslims in these eight years. It came the civil right movement time. Black people fed up with the Christianity. They wanted an alternative. And our people, students, youth, and these, they were in the Maidan. Everyone became Dari. And they had not studied Islam in their countries. We did it in our circles, in each university. We had circles for studies. We learned, I learned, maybe 80% or more of my knowledge of Islam in America in these study circles of life. So we said, how we can reach out to the elite? And this is also applies with Muslims as well because we want also, the Muslims we want to reach, the elites to be with us. Because they are in more important positions in which they could make things happen better than if they are just an ordinary people. Our proposal was that we have to choose as a sample and a beginning and make a test get 10 PhD people in social sciences and humanities and Islamic studies, train them to be able to present them, create for them programs in which they will learn how to approach these people. They need a salary. Let me again emphasize in this place, I bear witness in front of Allah Ta'ala. 
that never money was an obstacle in front of me when we wanted to do anything for Dawi and for Islam. It was only quality of people. If I had the people, they were able to bring the money. MSA of US and Canada, we formed it in 1963. Seven brothers. We took out from our pocket $200. And was the budget of 1963 for MSA of US and Canada. The next year, we were able to raise it to 2000 just a dot fell in front of it. Approximate, of course, I'm making it close to a good number. 1965, I was president of the MSA. It became 20,000, every time tenfold. The next year was 200,000. And I can give you the stories, the names, who did it, where, who went where, and so on and so forth. The year after was two million dollars. Ittaqu Allah wa yu'allimukum Allah. He will find for you the ways. Min ladunka ilma. And Islam spread in America. And I am coming to this elite. One. In America, if we do this, it fell down, I left, and some other brothers left, and so on. It did not start in the function, in the way we were planning that it could be done, and it will not fail. But alhamdulillah, now I have been able to convince the Hayy al Khairiya al Islamiya al Alamiya in Kuwait to make a special section for Dawah. This organization was formed how to protect the Muslims from the tafsir of Christianity. In one day, they collected uh, 100 million, 100 million dollars. And Sheikh Yusuf al Qanadawi said, We should be able, we are 1 billion and more, to collect even just 1 dollar from it everyone and we'll be able to do it. Unfortunately, because it was a difficult task, they could not work on it as much. But now they are serious. And I became chairman of the uh, Da'wah committee in Hay al Khairiya on a board level and so on. And inshallah I know how to work on it. And with your dua all of you, we may be able to really at least test in America. With a, with a 10 people. Here you have to do the same thing. Please set up a committee among the great brothers we have with experience. Study it. I will be very happy to come specially to your meetings. Anytime you want me, I will at least tell you our experience. Let us concentrate on the elite. And if these people are convinced, they also know how to do it. And better than us, maybe. So, I want to really uh, not stop immediately on this. But I was talking to one of our uh, wonderful brothers, today and I asked him a question and told him, if you were me, what do you do, what should I say to my brothers in this meeting? And he was superb. He put an emphasis, this transition period needs everyone to work. And that's why I said it in the beginning, but it was not mine. It was one of the brothers who put it in a very beautiful way. I was listening and my heart was so happy that there was an extra thing which came in. 
I talked to another brother also. They also gave other solutions. Our time is getting short. I could bring it. Maybe I could even put it on writing on a note and give it to you. I don't want to keep everyone busy because once I don't have permission from my boss that I should be late. I must go home and sleep. She is not here. Okay, ordered work. <laughs> Don't you think it's good, sisters, that I should listen? Yes. Barakalafi. <laughs> so I will not really keep you much longer, but anyone you want to discuss anything or do you have any uh, suggestions or any uh, advice of how we should upgrade what I have said and also bring alternatives. One condition, we cannot be lazy. We have to be all participate. Man kana lillah, we have just one simple dua from Allah Ta'ala. Ya Allah, fulfill this promise which this man has made for the people of Malaysia to be able to be again a bit free. <coughs> Say Ameen. 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 Allow any negativity to come into your soul. I think this is uh, something that we have to emulate uh, for people uh, in this period of transition. We have one more year to go. And then if we are still lamenting and worrying and, and, and what we call uh, blaming each other, I think, uh, believe me, one year is too short a time. Then you realize that uh, everything is gone. I think uh, Dr. Ahmad Tani has given the sum. Or because as usual, some positive enthusiasm for us to move forward to make sure that this will not fail after working so hard uh, for the past 48 years uh, during the formation of Abib. Uh, then I think uh, everybody counts, everybody must come forward, there shouldn't be any passenger. Everybody should play your role, no passenger in the next one year at least. Inshallah to make sure that Brother Anna will become the next Prime Minister. This class is 56% full. 56% full. It is 0 0.1, 56.1. But I give up that. <laughs> so I think uh, let's listen to Dr. Manu Manuti. He is uh, uh, what we call a uh, former president of Abib that we sent into the party to assist Brother Anwar and he was made a senator, now the head of uh, one university to mold the young people. I think uh, we would like to invite Dr. Manuti to give some comment or uh, insight into what we discussed because it's a discourse. Well, at least uh, we have some brother who is with an ex-on experience who uh, is deep into the party, moving the party, assisting brother Azwa in the party. And uh, inshallah, I think uh, he will give some better insight into what should be done or what needs to be done, uh, what are expected of uh, the, the, the Jama'ah to, to, to support, uh, to make sure that uh, this endeavor will become a successful one. The other side. Our respected and beloved uh, brother Rahman Tadji, brother Ahmad Azad, and our brothers and sisters. Uh, once again, we feel so happy to welcome our dear brother to Malaysia, particularly at this uh, very uh, critical juncture. This approximately the year from now, as promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the Mawdah uh, of Muhammad, with all the Sunnah of Allah, 
the using uh, different approaches, in particular on education, apart from politics becomes only a vehicle, but what is important is knowledge and education. I believe that what we have said, that we must continue to prepare uh, 10, 20, 100 uh, to add with the specialized in different field of sciences. It will be inshallah. From Malaysia. From Malaysia. And we will do so, it in America. A part of Turkey, <laughs> joining with America. Huh? America actually we need to write a new chapter of Islamic history of the rising tide of Islam from the Western world, beginning with America and Canada, Inshallah. and also you. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi It's a pleasure meeting you again. And I was attending a meeting of one of the biggest agencies for Dawa in Malaysia. It's in New Malaysia. And the uh, topic of the meeting was about power struggle internally and how our, about power struggle within ah. the organization. Yeah. And uh, most of the attendees of the meeting were surprised that even after being big win the election, the issue is still revolving around who gets what and how are we competing against our own brother. And this is at the very top of the government agencies. And uh, I believe I share this just to show that uh, it's a real problem. And most of the problem, in the end, fall back into passion for power, politics, and how one position oneself to gain more power. That's what at least from my perspective as young men, uh, those who are not involved in politics directly, but I guess uh, that is very telling in a way that when one gets power, especially this is within the Islamic circle, they seem to be blinded by you know, uh, hijab. They are looking into and within themselves that uh, power struggles among them does not affect or does not have a big impact towards society. They seem to be ignoring others' perspectives, the people's perspective that, you know, uh, we can change people, we can do uh, real politics, culture politics like others do. Uh, it's okay because we are now new government. So I also get, and uh, I believe this is also happening across other agencies and ministries uh, and uh, our colleague knows perhaps uh, better because he is within the system. At least I'm at the peripheral of the system, but this is my observation. And if things continue like this, the Islamists will surely lose trust yeah. among others because we are competing with other civil societies, movements which are more dynamic and they are well connected in terms of connection and networking. We use the gifts of Obami and whatnot. But now, because you are engaging directly with other civil society, liberal, secular minded, liberal societies, I can tell for sure that the connection is at the highest level and they can just garner support, finance, and also lobby at the topest level with this. This is what we're lacking when it comes to mobilization and also fundraising and, and how to influence minds of the people. So I guess this is uh, the point that you, you are wise enough to, to get my point. But this is the concern for my young men who uh, used to be idealists and also so what hope that our idealism is put into practice and can be put into agenda or continuation. Thank you. This is not a big problem. It can be solved. <coughs> the essence of all these things are that sometimes we don't have enough patience. Uh, we have to have some patience. And we have to not only sbiru, but also sabiru. Have patience on patience. 
and it will bring the accurate result. We, it needs a new approach of Khutbat al <laughs> If you make a new approach to Khutbat al we will be able to reduce the effect of this uh, individuality to great minimum. Number one, <clears throat> this book of uh, Brother Idara to Salah, Bassam al Sa'i, it's a beautiful book. When I read it, believe me, you have seen it because we print it also in Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. The, in Arabic, in English, and I think even in Malay, is it translated? One of the bestsellers in the last book fair. Okay, so I would like to have a copy of the Malay copy as well from this. This book will put us in the right frame of mind. When we concentrate Salah in a certain way, and the way he has put such a beautiful language for it, with the help of Allah, really, we will come to our senses. And we will be much more close to Allah. If you are not able to understand it, you want Allah Ta'ala to transcribe it and then go and look at it. We have to behave with Allah in the right manner. And the Salah is the place to do it. And this book is beautiful. Just a small one. You don't have to go even to the big one. For scholars, give them the big one. And let us print a new one. But it's, uh, the small one is enough. Allah, I tested it in five, six times. Just to open the book, even the small one. I read the page two, three things new it was to me. And it upgraded my quality of the salad. So this is a book you have to propagate. You have to read it yourself. You have to put it to your friends. You have to make it something read in each family. Just one page, at random even. Inshallah, you will see that it will create the right environment. Number two is this book, Mithaq uh, al-Sharaf al the Pact of Honor of the Dawah and so on. But it's actually, we translated in English, the uh, ethics, of ethics of engagement rather than ethics of disagreement. Now, this book, we have updated it. It was 80 points. Now it is about 110, 115 points. You read it, no Muslim will differ from it. And this will begin to actually bring the Muslims easily to be able to realize that they have to be in one front. And have discussions, not who is right, who is wrong. Make discussions and dialogues with these people especially the wise people among them in the beginning. And we know who is more wise than the other as well to talk to them. You will find they will come to their senses. Especially if you bring this kind of events from the Prophet's life, that one which I mentioned. His face was red, he was angry, and by the way, then later on, some of the Sahaba wrote that the point of difference was on Qadr, which is a section of Iman. And the Prophet didn't say who is right and who is wrong. He just left them. There was more important issue. The unity of Muslims. Muslims working with each other. We want our ulama to take out from our Islamic books more examples of this which the Prophet handled it. There is also the 
a thing which has made uh, in many countries we succeeded and we tried. Talk to these brothers in the other Islamic parties. Tell them we want to have one day in every month that we want to get together, either have lunch together or dinner together or tea time, whatever is convenient and you can change it and try all. And every time meet in the premises of one of them. Change the place. We don't need chairman. In whosever place it is, he will chair the meeting when they are there. Okay? And in this, the only agenda will be everyone saying about their organization and what they are doing for the service of the Ummah. What are their activities for the service of the Ummah? If they listen to each other for meetings, with the lunch and with the dinner and so on and so forth, you will find the hearts will become much softer. They know that these people are as sincere as we are. They may have misconceptions on certain things. You will remove the differences automatically. We tried it in several places and I could give details and so on and so forth, that it worked. And it will work. And any occasions you have, which is a happy occasion, invite some of the leaders. Let them be with you. This will build the bridges. When we are not even meeting with each other, the hearts become more lazy to bring Noor out. But if we provide the environment for the Noor to come from the heart, inshallah this Ummah has the capability of overcoming some of these problems. But be sure that it will not be done in one day. It will not be in one meeting. And we do not have to even discuss in the first four or five meetings that we want to do this and that. And don't talk about it. They will be asking, coming and saying, why not we should be, to be connected? Let some of our ulama bring these things which will bring the heart of the people together. And you can play a role. You can play a very important role. Because this is the age group people's personality is getting full. And even you know that person becomes fully developed 40 in some statements and so on. So we are all over 30. So we are reaching there. Well, <laughs> 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 this is a very important point, but we have tried in certain places and it has brought good results. Okay, I think uh, what we call uh, that was sum up the uh, fighting with each other's position. Look at the bigger picture, what we call we have one more year to go. And then we have to engage with all kind of groups so that everybody in consensus that uh, the, the best thing to happen to this country is to for, for Adwa to be the next Prime Minister and Mahathir on and honoring the promise and, and, and he will get all the legacy that uh, he sought for. I think we shall... shall I have just one simple thing on it. Turkey is playing a very important role for Islam and Muslims. Please make dua for Brother Abdullah. When you are making dua for Brother Abdullah, make it to him. Because both of them, they could work together beautifully.
make dua for him. The enemies are doing everything they can to try to make problem for this country. Wallahu ghalibun ala rabbi wa la kinta akhara al-nasi la ilaha Jazakallah khair. Barakallahu alayk. Before we end, Jazakallah khairan kathiran. In the last 60 years, this is a short version. <laughs> it was supposed to be printed in 2011. But when this Arab Spring came, there was a lot of information in it. Islamic work in America and everywhere else. The names of a lot of people. And I said this would be dangerous. So we stopped it and did not print it. And I went through it, alhamdulillah, just a few days ago I finished about 80% of it and removed the things which would cause trouble. And it will be ready, inshallah, in a few months that it will be published. Finally, we have USBs in which it is available in Arabic and in English. Then maybe one or two there, I think. Tomorrow, we can give it to the brothers and they can uh, distribute it. It is in Arabic, in full there is. In English, there is draft translation. Umar, the son of Dr. Isham, made it. And uh, some other people have made it. But this will be, inshallah, soon there. And this is the brief of that one. One brother, I gave him this USB. What he did, he sat down four day and night. He read it, he felt in love with it. So he made 32 pages writing, analyzing what are the main principles which we used for the success of the Dao. Any young man, especially in Abim and in the lower level, in the PKPI, and for what I, I think it's useful to read it because it will make you think, all right, if we were able to do this with this 17 year old boy who came out and he made a team with him and they did this, why not us? Here, if we do this, we will succeed and it will be the so we brought a few copies, you can distribute it to those who can read Arabic and at least the others, and the others should know that there is something like this available and the English will come out in about maybe two, three weeks. All right, and inshallah Malay, Malay, they told me some of the brothers they are going to translate it, but push pressure on uh, Abim, and Brother Shahra. To see that they will bring it up. Okay, okay. All right? Because we are not exactly what we need now. All the young people feel that they can change the world. That's true. They just do. 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 They just do.